uh, Anna. Um, so, um, I should also mention that Anna, um, although she's active in New York, was in Hong Kong for about a month and a half mm -hmm. over the summer. Mm -hmm. So she's been in the middle of it as well. Um, Anna, first just start out explaining what you're, what you're doing here okay. in New York and in Washington and what the... But, the button but, just seems to say Shangang, uh, but yeah, there's but more to it. But when you reverse, like in the horizontal, it becomes Gayo. Okay, um, first means, of all, which means, means like egg oil. oil. Like, it's very hard to translate it. I need Minky to tell you in Cantonese. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, before I start, I want to really thank you. Um, thanks to Pete and also um, Philip. Um, it's my honor to be here at the um, Overseas Press Club here. I am not a journalist, and um, I'm always like on the street, actually hosting rallies and doing things behind the scene. I met um, uh, my favorite friend over like the back, of, yeah, here also. Like um, so, in uh, so the thing is that um, I want to start by uh, introduce myself uh, a little bit to lead into the Hong Kong. The reason is I. I was born in the 60s, although I always tell people that I'm only 30 years old or 29.5, okay? That's my student, know my age. So the things that inspired me to become an activist was the Tiananmen Massacre. So in May, when OPC here had the amazing forum of the day, I heard all these like journalists here. It touched my heart. And um, although I don't remember who they are, but I listened to all their talks. So that was when I was a graduate student here. We, Hong Kongers went through the first large scale of rally during 1987, in, during May. And I was just a young girl, went back from my graduate school from Georgia. Remember, back then, there's no internet. <laughs> and uh, there's a, maybe a modem. Someone had made maybe like a little bit well off. So that's when the day I always tell the story. At the end of the valley, we walk to the Happy Valley and a whole margin. It's like hundreds, thousands of people. At the end, I saw two gentlemen sat on the railing. One is called Sitowa. The other is called Martin Lee. They were waving to everybody. At that day, I told myself, if there's a chance, one day I will help Hong Kong. I will devote myself. Winding down the road, um, I finally graduated my PhD in biology. I'm a microbiologist. Nothing to do with politics or anything, okay? I can give you all the lecture in bacteria and viruses. But here, we're not doing that. So, and I got the chance to come to New York as for my postdoc, and I finally met the man, waved to me years ago, called Martin Lee. He gave a speech at Columbia. And so, um, then I started my activist job slowly, but Tiananmen Square already died down at that time, was about six, seven years after that. So things are a little bit quiet. We are fighting like, Hong Kong people are like, okay, we're going to accept this 1997 in a way. Economy is not as bad. Like a lot of people immigrate to Canada everywhere, but a lot of them went back. So let's roll the time machine to 2014. So I still being an activist hosting a lot of the politicians from Hong Kong here, the different pan-democratic side. And I also go back to Hong Kong almost every year to join them for different things until I also ran into a youngster on the train from Taipo to Kowloon. His name is Joshua Wong. I am not kidding. I walk in the train with my daughter. He stood up, gave me my seat. I turn. Hi. Oh, that's Joshua Wong. I say, sit down. I need to talk to you. <laughs> that's how I met Joshua. And it's nothing about the politics, so that's how I met him. Yeah. He, and so during the Umbrella Movement, it became a big deal. The 79 days occupied. There's a lot of people in New York even went back just to join that. I was here. And we host rally here at Times Square, Chinatown. And then I form a group of mi 4 uh, called New York. New Yorker for Hong Kong, and mostly with students, graduate students, and a lot of Hong Kongers here. Now, when the time goes, we, between these five years, because at the end of this month marks the fifth anniversary of the Umbrella Movement, which is on September 28th. 
So Nathan actually will come at September 29th, thinking what we're going to do with him. Um, so what happened in this last June is not that very surprising, but the scale, like um, uh, Philip just said, it is amazed a lot of people. Remember, in the Bella movement, we have these student activists, Joshua Wong, Alex Chow, and Nathan Law, all these different youngsters. But this time is the leaders' movement. What, what is the slogan we have? Many people know that. Be water. Is the water you're drinking. This is a slogan. So far, no one gives the name yet. The umbrella movement, some people say want to call this water revolution or whatever. So, haven't have a name yet. Now, this something about leaderless is amazing thing because the events of the internet with this social group. One of the biggest group I want to bring out the real side, what happened, is this Lyndon. It's L-I-H-K-G. It's called Linden Forum or Lineage Hong Kong Golden. It's a, actually, you don't know what that is. It's actually a Hong Kong version of Reddit. I actually don't go to Reddit. I'm very busy on Facebook already. Don't have time for that. So according to the youngster that I am with, this is where they organize all the things. Really amazing. I give you some amazing factor that how they're doing things. You go on this with our real name. And one time, Martin and I, we chat, let's give us each other a nickname. It's very hard <laughs> to give a very good nickname. You can name yourself Donut, Water, Surely, whatever. I met all this on, online with the different name. It become anonymous. They organize things by coming together like a voting system. You have an idea, you have an idea. You put the idea there. The worst idea will sink down into the bottom. The good idea, they have like things go up. And then they can call people to meet at one place. Let's do something. Today we have a valley, but after the valley, let's get together in certain area of Hong Kong. They mobilize. They just go there. The people will drop off cases of water, cases of supply. And I witnessed that at, in July 1st. That day, I was at in Hong Kong for the valley. I walked to the Let's Go after the valley. And there are hundreds, hundreds of these youngsters. They all covered the face with the mask. And of course, because after the tear gas, they have the, also the goggles and all the gears. So this mobilization is the key point of this movement, which no one heard of. And it's amazing. One of the amazing things, during the G20 at, in Japan, Osaka, when Trump and a lot of the world leaders were there, what did they do? They testing the water and say, let's do fundraising. What do they want to do is to put the advertisement on the different newspaper. We, in New York Times, they give us a very good discount. I heard is about $160,000 to $170,000 for a page inside. That's the sort of not a discount, but a discount. And, yeah. And then, not just in New York Times, but few newspaper in London, few newspaper in Japan, in Taiwan, in Canada. How fast they raise the money, you cannot believe that. It's about $2 million in over for 24 hours. Hong Kong. Hong Kong now, yes. And then, what do they do? Who are going to hold the money? And they have accountant in there, they have graphic designer, they have rocket scientists. I, I really say it's rocket scientists, astronomy scientists in there. They have all sorts of people, they, 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 from the designing the newspaper wording to the graphic design, to the how do they contact New York Times, how do they contact our Guardian, how do they contact this, they did everything, just like that. So this is the first time they did that. With, and they communicate each other through a telegram group. Also, you don't need to have a real name. So the reason run that they did is another around, this time it's about more than a million dollar, Hong Kong dollar, in two hours. I wish I could make all this money, Minky. When you try to find 
we will go. I need to find another job to do that. Uh, so what do they do is a media campaign. What we care now, the arena is in United States here. It's the Human Rights and Democracy Act. They raised this $2 million target to country, United States and Great Britain. They want to launch a media campaign. In Great Britain, of course, they want them to, you know, because of Sino-British joint agreement, because this is no longer one country to system. They want to hold them responsible. In the United States, we're pushing very hard in the Congress. That's why I just came back. So excuse me when my mind is like a crowd. I just came back last night at 2 o'clock. So they had a hearing. Joshua Wong was there. Denise Ho, the singer, was there. Sharon Home from Human Rights in China. And also Sunny, a student, and another um, scholar, Dan, was there. And they gave a fabulous you know, hearing. And we were doing a lot of lobbying. We were meeting with the Speaker Pelosi and a lot of uh, people down there. What we are pushing here is the act. The whole Hong Kong's eye are on this act. They believe this is like a Meniski one, but with more the terms on there. And so the movement is interesting for the youngster because why you, you ask them, let me give you some statistic, just very quick number that we were talking about it. So far, it's about, when we talk about the tear gas, it's about 3,000 something tear gas being employed. 3,000 what? Something. Can that, canisters? That, yes, canisters? yes. And then about 1,500 people got arrested. Among them, 400 of them were students. The age range, 12 years old to 72. So that's why Joshua always said he's senior activist right now. He's only 21 years old. So the 12 years old was a verse. And every time when they have a movement, how they mobilize, people go on the street. Why? Because they believed that this is it. This is our battle. And I don't see my future. Of course, there's a lot to do with economic a lot to do with what just uh, Philip explained before, how the whole history come down. But most importantly, these youngsters, they are willing to sacrifice themselves. Some of them have their will carry with their backpack, and they're determined to go on the front line. Are they scared? Yes. We talked to many of them sideline. They will not want you to swim them, or even when we post picture, we try to burn them. We want to protect them. And who come out for this valley each time? Each constituents. We have the big valley. Everybody came out, two million people, one million people. We have civil servants, which rarely will come out in valley. They host themselves as a group on a valley. The teachers, the accountant, the lawyers, and students. I'm talking about middle school students. Okay? And we got the support from Every, every one, like in the different constituents in Hong Kong. And they really want to support this movement.